Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to finish uh, our uh, discussion on basics of game theory. And uh, the, the topics in this episode is general assumptions and methodology. Um, <clears throat> so there are uh, several important assumptions or key assumptions that we make in our analysis of game theory. And one of them is rationality. Um, the important point that you should never forget is rationality does not directly mean uh, that the players are maximizing a utility function. Uh, rationality means uh, players are behaving consistent with their preferences. And this preferences could be uh, you know, uh, maximizing their own uh, payoffs, it could be maximizing and minimizing their opponent's payoff, it could be a combination of both, it could be, uh, you know, taking strategies uh, just to hurt the opponent, uh, and at the same time, so you see what I mean? So, um, obviously, as we sort of uh, follow the general rule, if the preferences of a player uh, satisfy some nice axioms, uh, or some nice properties, well, then we assume that uh, those preferences can be represented by a utility function. In particular environment, we call them payoff functions. Um, and so, therefore, uh, you know, uh, consistent, uh, behaving consistently uh, according to a preference relation versus maximizing a utility function can mean the same thing, again, under the uh, assumptions that preferences satisfy some nice properties. But in general, uh, what we mean by rationality is that the pre uh, players uh, behave consistent with their preferences. And um, obviously, for simplicity, in almost all of our questions, we are going to define some utility function or payoff function instead of talking about preference relation. But that's simply because of uh, the simplicity. Uh, it's, 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 it doesn't really mean uh, more than that. All right, the second important assumption that we have is the common knowledge assumption. So what does that mean? Well, we assume that the game structure is common knowledge between the players. So what is game structure? Remember our earlier uh, descriptions? The set of players, uh, each player's actions or strategies available to them, the information uh, structure, uh, the rules of the game, and the payoff structure or the preferences. So this game structure is a common knowledge between the players means the following. So let's assume there are two players. Um, so if the game structure is common knowledge between these two players means player one knows the structure, player two also knows the structure. Furthermore, player one knows that the player two knows the structure. Similarly, player two knows that player one knows the structure. Even further than this, uh, player one knows that player two knows that player one knows the structure. And same for the second player. So there's this sort of higher order uh, uh, knowledge. Um, so I'm not making any uh, sort of formal um, definition here, but common knowledge uh, of, of the game structure means uh, both parties are, are fully well aware of the rules of the game. Uh, but that doesn't mean that they know everything, uh, every actions, every information. That, that two, two things are very different. So if, for example, player one has an information set which has uh, three decision notes, that means, remember, player one uh, doesn't know which exact decision note he's at whenever he's at this info set. So he can't distinguish those decision nodes. But can player two distinguish? Uh, well, uh, well, again, it's like uh, the game structure is common knowledge versus everybody knows everything are two different things, okay? Uh, so hopefully this is going to be clearer as we move along and discuss more and more examples later. Well, the solution concepts is basically what we are going to do. Um, meaning that the game theory has two sort of components. One, uh, describing the reality um, and modeling the uh, strategic environment and then analyzing it. So in this course, we teach the analysis part. So at the end of this course, hopefully you are going to learn a big deal of how to analyze a strategic environment. 
Well, but sometimes even more important part is describing the strategic environment and modeling the strategic environment. Uh, in this course, in I mean, it's it's going to be almost always the case that I will describe the strategic environment to you, and so all you have to do is just to analyze it. But as a scientist, we we usually describe the strategic environment and then analyze it. And the, the, the description of the uh, environment or the modeling part is sometimes more challenging. Well, why is that so? Well, because there's a very uh, important trade-off that we have to deal with, uh, which is the trade-off between the simplicity and realism. Uh, well, as we know, the real life is way too complicated, right? Uh, you know, pinning down what the exact players are, you know, what their actions are, what they know, what they don't know. So this is, 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 is hard to come with. It's, it's, it's hard to explain in, in many uh, strategic environments. Even if so, taking the real life, taking the picture of real life and putting it into lab to analyze it uh, is, is not uh, most of the times uh, effective or efficient way of doing research. Why is that so? Well, because, um, you know, if you take the picture of the reality and then model it exactly the same way, well, then this model will be either mathematically too complicated or it will be impossible to analyze. And in fact, we will see a lot of examples where, uh, I mean, most of our examples will be very, very, very simple uh, environments, but you'll see, you know, even under some small twists, things can get very messy and complicated. So, uh, you know, mapping the reality into mathematical model is not really the smartest approach most of the times. Um, but obviously, so what does that mean? That means you have to get rid of some of the uh, ingredients of the reality. So if the reality is some sort of a puzzle, well, then you have to, you know, take some parts of this puzzle and try to reach a core of a puzzle where you can analyze and then learn something uh, sensible. And then once you analyze this core, well, then you can bring those, you know, ignored pieces back together and see how they, you know, piece by piece affect the uh, prediction of the model or the analysis of your core model. Um, this is what I mean. So this is basically how the uh, research in game theory uh, moves on. Um, so um, we obviously prefer simpler models, not because they reflect the reality 100%, but because uh, one, they capture sort of some key uh, ingredients that we want to analyze. And then, uh, you know, they're easier to work with. Um, uh, but obviously, you know, the simplest model could be something has probably nothing to do with reality. Obviously, we don't want or we don't like such models because it would be way too uh, far from or sort of uh, uh, disconnected to the reality. And so the analysis of s such game would be just pure mathematical practice for an economist has no point, obviously. All right, um, so one more thing that I would like to mention is, you know, there are some textbooks talk about some implicit assumptions. They explicitly talk about them, like uh, they're similar to the rationality. They say, uh, you know, the game theory assumes that the players are selfish, uh, you know, uh, this and that. Well, um, I am not going to make any explicit uh, assumption out of them. Well, the thing is, if you want to uh, model a, a, a strategic environment where players, for example, care about each other's payoff or, or, or jealousy is an important uh, sort of a significant part of this strategic environment or a, anything else. So you can definitely incorporate those into the preference relations, all right? into the game structure. And then I take the game structure as given and then show you how to analyze it. So once again, if your players care about the other's payoffs or you know if they would like to increase or decrease their opponent's payoffs, so any co combination, any sort of, I mean, other than maximizing their own welfare, 
they may have different intentions. And all those intentions can actually be incorporated into the payoff structure. Uh, and so I am in this course going to take that structure as given and then show you how we analyze those games. All right. Um, so uh, that's that. All right. So uh, that's it for uh, this episode.